soldiers have rioted in a military unit in the town of Kochenivo, Novosibirsk region of Russia. The reason for this is that the soldiers are unable to receive the necessary medical care and are being prepared to be sent to war in Ukraine. The soldiers, who complain that the situation in the military unit is unbearable, also said that they do not want to return to the war. This was reported by Russian telegram channels. The soldiers destroyed the barracks where they were staying and broke the windows. Later, 12 soldiers left the military unit on their own. Most of them were detained and returned after a while. Germany is renting old Soviet tanks from museums to train Ukrainian troops in order to bring the exercises closer to real conditions, Lieutenant General Andreas Marlow head of the EU Special Training Command for Ukraine, told Reuters. The agency noted that instructors from 17 countries have already trained about 18,000 Ukrainian soldiers in Germany to operate modern tanks and high-precision air defense systems and have also passed on their skills to snipers, engineers, paramedics and drone operators. However, the war in Ukraine is mostly using older equipment, which is more readily available, as well as time-tested strategies. So the German military dug trench systems according to Russian standards and rented old Soviet tanks from museums. These museum systems are used by the Russian side, and sometimes they plant booby traps in abandoned equipment. Using this technology during exercises makes it easier to demonstrate where you need to be careful not to trigger an explosion if you find them on the battlefield and open the door. Marlow shared, the mission to train Ukrainian troops was established in 2022. Last Friday, it was extended for another two years. Part of the training in Germany now includes studying Russian trench systems, which the lieutenant general said were typically built in a fixed pattern. We're talking about the shape of the trenches, where to expect cover and firing positions, he explained. In addition to Soviet equipment, modern simulators and high-tech mannequins are used for training on which doctors can practice complex situations. Ukrainian military personnel are also trained to operate drones which are increasingly used in the war in Ukraine. Media previously reported that the European Union ambassadors extended the training of Ukrainian military personnel for two years. Over the previous two years, 70,000 Ukrainian armed forces soldiers were trained within the framework of this training mission. In addition, the UK Ministry of Defence said that training Ukrainian soldiers was damaging the British Army's combat capability. At training grounds in the country, applications from British Army units to conduct training sessions in 2023 were rejected eight times, more often than in 2019. During the operation in the Kursk region, Ukrainian troops are gaining a lot of experience. In the future, this will allow them to conduct similar operations in other territories in Russia. This was stated by the chairman of the Council of Reserves of the Ground Forces of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, Ivan Timochko, on the air of the Espresso TV channel. According to him, in the future, the Ukrainian Armed Forces will be able to use another tactic of warfare. For us, the Kursk operation is a military operation the analysis of which will make it possible to conduct similar operations in the territory of the Russian Federation or to use the tactics and strategy of conducting a mobile war in the future, Timochko said. He added that the Ukrainian troops gained experience working on enemy territory when there is no support from the local population. This also affected the Russian Federation. The Kursk operation directly affected the internal distrust among Russians since we saw an unconsolidated population and this destroyed the image of Kadyrov and his paramilitary associations, which led to local clashes in Russia, says Timochko. The chairman of the Council of Reservists is convinced that holding the bridgehead in the Kursk region is important for Ukraine. Since we do not know what geopolitical challenges await us in the coming months, what the world reaction to the war in Ukraine will look like after the US elections. He concluded, despite repeated attempts, Russian forces have failed to dislodge Ukrainian troops from their positions in Russia's Kursk region. Now North Korean troop reinforcements are on the horizon.
Ukraine anticipates a boost in Russian troop numbers in the Kursk region soon. Intelligence reports indicate that Russia plans to deploy forces from one of its key allies, North Korea, to this front. Up to 13,000 North Korean soldiers are under consideration. Currently, these troops are undergoing training at Russian military grounds and are coordinating with Russian units, including working with translators, as language barriers pose a major challenge to synchronizing forces. Former member of the Kazakh parliament, Walikan Kaisarov, made a resonant statement in which he called a significant part of the territories within Russia originally Kazakh and called for their return to Kazakhstan. In his speech, Kaisarov turned to history and listed the regions of Russia that have Kazakh roots. Among them, he named part of Muscovy, Novosibirsk, Tumen, Orenburg, Kurgan, Astrakhan, Saratov and Omsk as well as vast territories in Siberia and Altai, which should return to their native harbour on the basis of historical justice. The Russians adapted the Kazakh names of these cities and the Orenburg region was given to Russia as a gift in the 1920s. Russia, as an artificial territorial entity, unites many nations and republics whose resources have been exploited by Moscow for a long time. A significant part of modern Russian territory fell under Russian control by accident. Earlier in a similar way, at the beginning of the 20th century, Russia occupied the Ukrainian Kuban where part of the local population still speaks a dialect of the Ukrainian language. Now the Kazakhs should demand historical justice, Kaisarov noted. Commenting on the situation, Russian analyst Anatoly Nesmian said that revanchist rhetoric can also arise in neighboring countries if the same policy becomes mainstream in Russia. In fact, Russia's neighbors are hitting it with its own weapons. According to him, if the Russian leadership seriously considers old historical maps where modern states are absent, then it is not surprising that similar revisionist views are beginning to appear in neighboring countries. Nesmian recalled the importance of the Helsinki Act of 1975, which established the principle of the inviolability of post-war borders in Europe. According to him, the collapse of Yugoslavia and the Soviet Union created a grey zone where the administrative borders of the former republics became internationally recognized state borders. He emphasized that until February 2022, this principle was in effect, albeit not ideally, what contributed to peaceful coexistence. Now Nesmian believes the aggravation of revanchist sentiments based on historical rights requires a search for new approaches to international relations. He expressed the opinion that the world should return to civilized coexistence despite current attempts to justify territorial claims by references to historical justice. Public reaction and political consequences, the former MP's statement has sparked a furious reaction in both Russia and Kazakhstan, raising tensions in bilateral relations. Experts warn that such statements could fuel nationalist sentiment and destabilization in the region. In the event of further disintegration of Russia into parts, the return of the original Kazakh territories to Kazakhstan is not excluded. 